Um, here we are. So I'll hand over. I'll, I'm the host for the evening. So I'll hand over the uh, button to Nilesh Pai to start the proceedings. Nilesh Pai, over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Gosu. Host and those. A very warm welcome yeah. and a very happy New Year to everyone. So hope everybody is safe and uh, well. So wish you again a healthy and a happy New Year. And I would like to thank all the members present here and all of our new members who have joined recently. For this, uh, I, I will invite Kaustub, or sorry, not Kaustub, Jayesh Bhai. Jayesh Bhai and I think who else? Jayesh Bhai, can you take uh, take over and introduce the new members? Yeah. Uh, be before, Jayesh, uh, just a sec. Before we start with that, I would uh, like uh, Sanjay to take over and uh, get the assert message happening. Okay. And then Bye. we can get into the message. Yeah, yes, thank you. Thank you, Kausov, and welcome everybody. If just a moment, I'll just share my screen. Yeah, yeah so friends, uh, good evening. And thank you so much for joining us here on the 90 eighth tech day of assert uh, a very special and a big thank you to all our sponsors sevex setcom and technobind uh, believe me this kind of events are not possible without the support of the sponsors so uh, uh, dear all can we thank the sponsors by typing ttt that is thank you thank you thank you to our sponsors can we please type thank you thank you thank you and uh, uh, thank them for sponsoring us and giving us this opportunity to host that Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. So we're moving ahead. Uh, Assert has been promoted by uh, leading SIs of Mumbai. And uh, Assert is based on three pillars mainly, which is partner, progress, and evolve. Yeah, we basically uh, started in 2012 and have received incredible support from the SI community. System integrators and retailers and technology are eligible for membership. Of us, sir. Currently, we have members who are in sales and services of computers, CCTV, IT rental, services related to printers, cybersecurity, e waste management, and many more. So, these members are based in Mumbai, Thane, and Nabe Mumbai. So, friends, the current membership strength has reached to 212 members. Isn't this amazing? Last month, uh, we had a three new members and can we congratulate the membership team the jay sompura and Shirish marathe by typing ccc clap 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 for them please type ccc uh, and kudos to them they have been putting lots of efforts to add new members so thank you so much again jayesh and Shirish, for this amazing work so great great thank you so much and now assert has been hosting various <clears throat> events for the benefits of the members and tech days are our flagship event so this is one of the event which is a flagship event which is happening every month and today is the 98th tech day of assert it's an it's an achievement and just a moment the screen is i don't know Yeah, so it's a 98 tech day and soon we are going to celebrate the 100 tech day with a grand, grand, grand celebrations. In tech days, uh, what we do is we have a product presentations from our sponsors. Uh, it is an opportunity for our members to network and partner uh, with the OEMs and get new opportunities for them. Many a times, Assert has been honored by sponsors by launching their products on the Assert platform. It's always been a great honor for us to sure. do that. We also host tech edge events, which are like the main focus of tech age is around upgrading the technical knowledge of our members and their teams. We invite various OEMs to train our members for their products, uh, sales, installation, and services. We also invite excellent speakers who are uh, in business management, sales, marketing, social media management, human, human resource management, etc. And this helps our members uh, to better manage their expanding businesses. In October 11, uh, October 2021, we started another annual event with the name of Assert Synergy. This was a full day event with overnight stay at the resort uh, located in Marve, Malad. Uh, and th these are a few pictures of that event. 
we also have a grievance team here uh, so uh, you can if you have any members have any issues with any oems uh, where they are not getting response from them or the issues are not getting resolved please send an email to the uh, grievance team and we can communicate your issues to the oem and try to resolve it we also have a tax advisor on panel uh, which can uh, help you advise you in your it or tax related uh, matters and that queries Assert Pulse. Assert Pulse uh, is a uh, quarterly newsletter uh, which highlights sponsors uh, uh, our tech days, uh, 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 which are hosted. Uh, any other events by Assert? We also include success stories of few of our. Somebody's on. Like, uh, please uh, mute yourself. Yeah, uh, what we do is we highlight our sponsors of tech days uh, of uh, all of the previous events uh, in Assert. We also include success stories of the uh, members, few of the members. And so uh, like this newsletter is not only circulated amongst members, uh, it is sent to media companies and other corporates as well. And this has got a wide circulation. And if you include your success story in that, I'm sure that you're going to get really, really good visibility for yourself. So please, if you have any success stories please do contact us and we will try to include all that success stories and that yeah now coming to the consortiums yeah this has always been uh, always been a great pleasure to have this kind of con consortiums in uh, uh, in assert what we have done is uh, we we are actually 212 members last month uh, we have added new three new members which we are going to introduce uh, during this event so between these 212 members, we have divided all of them in six different teams. Uh, so what happens is smaller teams, they, they easily you can network, you can understand each other's businesses and you can collaborate with each other and do more business. And this has been an, like a, a, almost a great success for us. Uh, and we can see that uh, a certain turnaround, if we uh, turnover, if we see we are um, almost around 2,500 crores a year. That's what the turnover of uh, so it is. So I would like to thank all the consortium captains uh, who have been doing a super, super amazing job. Uh, we have been taking monthly meetings with them. We have been pushing them, them to do various things and getting things done from their uh, teams. And they have been always awesome in supporting us. So thank you so much, consortium captains. Uh, yeah, and these are the social media links. Uh, you know, like uh, every company or every organization is must to have a social media presence. This is the social media presence for us. So members, please do go there, like us, share our uh, post and all. This is going to give us a wide, wide coverage uh, to other uh, IT fraternity and other IT uh, companies, and we can get uh, new members from there. So thank you so much for hearing me out patiently. Uh, thank you, sponsors. and. Over to you, Kaustub. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you so much. Uh, so this was all about assert, but it's not only limited to it. And I, if people have noticed, we are the PP kit for all the SI community, partner progress and evolve. So oh, we this is about. where uh, we, we, oh, our wow. strength lies in collaboration. So I would definitely uh, hand over the uh, uh, stage to uh, Jayesh. Jayesh from the membership team. And we are glad that we're just growing day by day. I'll leave it to Jayesh to get the new members introduced, please. Thank you. Over to you, Jayesh. Thank you, Kosu. Good evening, fellow assertors and dear guests. I will read a famous quote from Bo Jackson. And I quote, set your goals high and don't stop till you get there. As of today, we are 212 members and we are thankful to all of you for supporting us. As individual goals in life, we at membership team, that is me along with Sirish Marathe and rest of the board, have set a goal to achieve target of 250 members by 31st March 2022. So it is a honest and humble request to give us one reference. Yes, one reference from each one of you whom you think can be part of this esteemed association. You just need to tell them to click on the join now button on our asset website, fill up the form and rest 
will do the needful. I hope you will help us to accomplish our goals. Otherwise, our nokri is in danger. So let uh, let me quickly introduce some of our new members uh, who have recently joined our association. Yeah, so let me call upon someone who has 24 years of experience. Can someone mute yourself? Yeah. Please. Let me call upon someone who has 24 years of experience in IT sales and services. With a huge round of applause, please welcome Ramesh Kuwar from Kunal Computers. And he was referred by our member, Santosh Pawar from Sigma Systems. Over to you. Mr. Ramesh. Are you there? Ramesh, can we have your video on, please? Yeah, yeah. Can you see everyone? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Uh, hello, friends. Uh, this is Ramesh Karwar, founder and owner of Kunal Computers. Uh, basically, this company was started in 1996. And from then, we are consistently working to make this company bigger. Uh, we have completed 25 years in this IT field. We are presently working uh, each and every day to attain perfection and to deliver uh, quality products to our customer. We are basically an IT company. We all <laughs> Hello. Uh, yes, we are an IT company. We are basically an IT company which deals in all IT products, uh, refurbished uh, laptop, desktop, servers, routers, which is uh, network product. And basically our specialization is Apple products. Uh, we have all refurbished Apple laptop, desktop, servers, Mac Pros, Mac Minis, and uh, stuff uh, like that. We also give services uh, related to the, uh, these products and parts related to these products. So anyone who needs this product, uh, they can uh, directly get in touch with us. We can give you in a uh, bulk and uh, uh, good price also. And secondly, we are uh, running another company called RK Recycling International LLP, which is a recycling company. And basically, we give services like uh, IT asset disposal, recycling of businesses, recycling certificate, as asset refurbishment. So this is all from me. Hope to serve you in future. I will sincerely thanks all the members uh, listening to me. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ramesh. Thank you for your brief introduction. <laughs> Thank you. <sir. laughs> Moving on, let's call upon someone who has 21 years of experience having focus on AMCs and laptop repairs. Let's call upon Mr. Keur Doshi from Microcare Services. He has referred, he has been referred by our member popularly known as Bala from Mumbai Data Recovery. What do you care? Hello, friends. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, the research team. I would thank, uh, personally thank uh, Jayesh Bhai, Nilesh Bhai, and the entire team who had helped me in onboarding process to be a part of this wonderful group. Uh, Microcare services, as I've said, it started. You are muted. Yeah. Can't hear. Am I audible? Yeah, now you are. Yeah. yeah. So we have been uh, providing AMC services, laptop repairs, and anything, every IT services to our corporate clients since 2000. Uh, recently, we have started uh, uh, surveillance as our one additional product category, and we provide all kinds of security solutions as well. So if anybody looks like this kind of services, they can always get in touch with me. In our next expansion, we plan to add digital marketing and website development services to our portfolio and would be very happy to work with anybody of you who has this kind of requirements. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. Uh, over to you, Jayesh Bhai again. Thank you, Keur, for your crisp and uh, concise introduction. So moving on, 
let's call upon someone who has 15 years of experience in sales and service of automation products mm -hmm. with a huge round of applause bye log virtual applause chahiye please please welcome mr kalpesh gowli from alltech solutions good evening so, everybody of a member ramakant vishwakarma from it gate solutions good evening good evening good evening are jo hotel ka awaaz hai wo dikh nahi raha hai yahan pe नाश्ता नहीं हुआ लगता है चलो गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन माई नेम इज कल्पेश गवली कंपनी नेम इज ऑलटेक सोल्यूशन माई जर्नी जर्नी स्टार्ट इज ऑलटेक सोल्यूशन जर्नी स्टार्ट इज टू थाउजेंड टेन एंड बैक इन ऑफिस एज अ सर्विस इंजीनियर जहाँ से मैंने जर्नी स्टार्ट किया जो ऑफिस वाय से चालू किया था तो कहीं मैं डायरेक्टर के यहाँ पे पहुँच गया हूँ तो उसमें बहुत सारे मुझे प्रॉब्लम्स आए आप जैसे बहुत सारे दोस्त मिले हैं दो आप जैसे एक ओनर मिले किसी के सपोर्ट्स मिले जहाँ से मैं आज बहुत बड़े जगह पे पहुँच गया हूँ ऐसे मुझे लगता है और इसमें अंदर जो बेसिकली मैंने जो जर्नी स्टार्ट किया था वहाँ से मैंने एक ही सोचा था कि मुझे करना क्या है तो एक रिपेयरिंग को फील्ड पकड़ के चलना है स्टार्टिंग किया था जो प्रिंटर और फोटो के स्टार्ट किया हुआ था पर जैसे जैसे मुझे एक्सपीरियंस मिलता गया जैसे जैसे मार्केट में घूमते गए तो पता चला कि खाली फोटो और प्रिंटर पर नहीं चलना है उसके अगेंस्ट पे जितने प्रोडक्ट थे सब प्रोडक्ट बट I think his video and everything is gone. Actually, he is not disconnected, so actually he may not be aware. Also, it seems. Hey, so no problem. Issue. I think. Uh, yes. Okay. Technical. I think he is back. He is come back. He is come back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You can. Office restart. automation. Office automation product. All the types of photocopier, printer, scanner, projector, CCTV cameras, mm -hmm. computer, desktop. लैमिनेशन मशीन पेपर सेटर्स टोनर कार्टेजेस ओरिजिनल एंड कंफर्टेबल ऑल द और इसके अंदर मैं तो बिलीव करता हूँ सर्विस के ऊपर आज मेरे पास सेल्स का कोई टीम नहीं है क्योंकि सेल्स मुझे करने की आज जरूरत नहीं क्योंकि मैं सर्विस पे बिलीव करता हूँ और जितने मेरे सर्विस वाले क्लाइंट है जिसको मैंने प्रॉपरली सर्विस दिया है वहाँ से आज कम से कम महीने के जो है कम से कम तीस सौ पैंतीस इंक्वायरी जो है मुझे वहाँ से जो रेफरल के थ्रू आता है तो और मैं बिलीव करता हूँ कि मैं आपके भी एक रिक्वेस्ट करता हूँ कि आपके लिए भी कोई अगर सर्विस ऑफ पार्ट का इश्यूज है तो प्लीज मुझे एक बार मुझे मौका दीजिए एक बार मेरा सर्विस चेक के लिए उसके बाद आगे से अपना बिजनेस स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं स्पेशली थैंक टू नीरो भाई एंड रविकांत रविकांत को स्पेशली थैंक्स करूंगा क्योंकि मेरा तो रवि का ज़्यादा मेरा ये नहीं है बॉन्डिंग नहीं है पर हम लोग कम से कम तीन से चार साल से हम लोग एक साथ काम कर रहे हैं और वो जहाँ पर भी हम लोग को तकलीफ होता है वहाँ से एक दूसरे से बहुत अच्छे तरह से कॉर्डिनेट करते हैं और जैसे कि नीरो भाई नीरो भाई तो ऐसे आदमी है जैसे बोलते हैं ना कमांडर के जैसे हैं उनके पास अगर कुछ प्रॉब्लम के लिए हम लोग जाते हैं ना तो ऐसा सोल्यूशन देते हैं जैसे कमांडर कोई कमांडो को अगर सिपाही को बोलते हैं भाई फायर कर दे तो जैसे फायर करने लग जाते हैं ना वैसे सोल्यूशन तो पहले नीरो भाई देते हैं स्पेशलिस्ट हैं तो नीरो भाई एंड रविकांत जो उन्होंने मुझे यहाँ पे ज्वाइनिंग किया थैंक यू थैंक यू कल्पेश फॉर शेयरिंग Thank you, thank you, membership team, and thank you, members, the new members. We all welcome them. So now we start with the the first speaker of the day. Uh, may I invite Mr. Sri Krishna Srinivasan uh, from Autonomy? So, uh, Mr. Srinivasan has been the founding architect at Autonomy. This was uh, acquired by Source Labs earlier this year, and currently serves as the director of product management at Source Labs. Prior to Autonomic, Autonomic, he was leading a team of software engineers at Tex Texas Instruments, and that was responsible for architecting and developing tools used by circuit designers to configure IoT devices and sensors. And he brings in his expertise in technology uh, with so many years of experience. So over to you, Mr. Sri Krishna. Thanks so much. Can you guys hear hear me and see me? Yes, yes. Awesome. Thanks. So I believe we have met before. uh yeah. i was i was in bombay mm -hmm. uh a, a few months ago when we did this event 
Yep. So, so welcome everybody to the event again, and uh, thanks so much for joining uh, the, the webinar. Uh, what I will do is, uh, let me share my screen and let me quickly go over uh, a, you know, a presentation, a quick presentation. Uh, this is more of a recap since uh, we have already gone through a presentation very similar to this. Uh, please let me know once you can see my screen. Yes, yes, we can see. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks. So as I was saying, this is more of a recap, uh, you know, based on what we did last time uh, when we when we had this event in person in, in Mumbai. Um, essentially, just to give you a, you know an overview of what uh, SaaS Labs and Autonomic does. Uh, you know, if you think about our everyday life, we we use our phones, we use our computers, we use uh, tablets much more than what we used to you know some time back. And uh, and as a part of that, we you know we deal with so many different applications every day, you know, day in day out. And when we deal with these applications, <laughs> we always want the best experience while we are you know using these applications. Uh, so how do how do these developers, how do these application developers make sure that they can provide the best experience? Uh, now, what they do is you know once once they develop the application, they spend a lot of time testing the product on, on, you know, uh, on various different uh, uh, browsers, various different machines. Um, you know, the, 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 the product, you want to make it work, you want to make sure it works on uh, Windows, a Mac, you know, uh, if, if somebody could have Windows XP, somebody could have Windows 10. Uh, it should work the same way on all these platforms. It should work the same way on Chrome, on Firefox, Safari, uh, whatever. Uh, you know, IE, Edge, whatever browser you use, it has to work the same way. Uh, so there is a lot of time and spend, uh, time and energy spent with these, you know, you know, by these uh, application developers to test the application on on these combinations of platforms and browsers. Now, uh, again, testing, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is various different ways of performing your tests. Uh, a simple way could be doing it manually. You have an application that's built. You just make sure you you know you click all the buttons, you enter all the text boxes, you enter the forms, you make sure everything looks okay when you're doing it manually. But the problem with that approach is, if you have you know a new release coming up every two weeks, every four weeks with the agile uh, way of doing things, there is so much time being spent just in testing the same things over and over again. So about 10, 12 years ago, uh, there was a whole paradigm shift in the testing industry to go from manual testing to automation testing. And uh, that became a common, common place uh, in, the, in, the you know, in the testing industry. Now, the problem people face with automation is there's a lot of time spent in creating automation and in maintaining automation. So uh, because of this, uh, you know, the automation, although it, you know, it's, it's much more favorable compared to manual testing, uh, because of the time spent in creating automation and in maintaining automation, although execution of automation must be faster, uh, uh, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, a gap uh, between where automation industry should be uh, currently versus where it is. And also, you need to hire some specialists, you need to hire experts in automation who are very costly or very expensive uh, to hire, uh, and, and only those people can do and can, you know, can create automation. So that's why there's a general problem in the, in the in the testing industry to adopt automation uh, and source labs exactly solves the problem you know it, it has a low code automation tool which can significantly accelerate your you know your automation speed your significant you know, it can significantly accelerate your maintenance speed so that without having an automation expert without having to spend a lot of time you can still create this automation now if you look at uh, a, an overarching vision of source labs, the goal of SaaS Labs is to make sure uh, all the applications that developers develop can be used by the customers seamlessly, which means that there should be no bugs, there should be no bugs on the UI, you know, there should be no bugs functionally, and, and everything should, you know, the, 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 the overall experience should be as seamless as possible. Uh, so that's the goal of, uh, of SaaS Labs. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have about 500 plus customers, enterprise customers. We have a few thousand, you know, 2000 plus total customers, you know, outside of enterprise. Uh, we have been around for almost 13 years and we have run 4 billion tests 
so far across all these customers. That's that's 400 crore step, 400 crore tests that we have run across all these customers in the last 10, 10 20 years. Uh, now I just want to give an overall, uh, you know, a, a high level overview of uh, all the all the different products that SaaS Labs offers. As we discussed, the first product was, you know, being able to execute the scripts on uh, on different combinations of platforms, process. You want to make sure the application looks the same way, it behaves the same way, no matter what machine you run your application on, uh, no matter which uh, browser you use the application on, it should all look the same. So we have over 1,200 different combinations of platforms and browsers that we offer, where you can run your tests on, um, uh, you know, to, to, to make sure that, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the experience is the same across different platforms. Uh, that's the, uh, uh, that, that, that's the, that's the first part. Uh, the second part is, uh, the, so that's a cross browser, cross browser, uh, testing part of it. The second part is, is the low code visual testing. As I said, again, it takes a lot of time and efforts and, and you need experts to be able to create and run these tests. So what the local testing offers is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a way for anybody who doesn't know anything about testing, who doesn't know anything about automation to be able to create these tests and to be able to maintain these tests. So a, you know, based on our existing implementations, based on our existing customers, uh, as I said, it takes a lot of time to create and maintain tests, right? So it would take, you know, for one test case to be created, it would take about eight to 10 hours uh, uh, and, and it would take about two to three hours to maintain that test, you know, the test case that was created. With autonomic, the same thing can be done in less than an hour uh, to create a new test case and maintenance can be done in pretty much no time at all. So we have seen across our customers, across our implementations, at least an increase of, you know, 6x, 8x, 10x in, uh, you know, in creating test automation compared to other, other ways of doing that. So this has been a very successful uh, product in, in, in SaaS Labs where um, our customers enjoy a, a huge number of benefits, you know, starting from, you know, super high productivity uh, to all the way to uh, people who don't know how to create automation, being able to create automation. So that, that's the low code testing part. Uh, you know, we also have the visual testing. So the low code testing product is usually used for making sure you know, your forms are working okay, uh, all the buttons are working okay, you know, your functionality is working okay. But sometimes you also wanna make sure your logo is appearing okay. Uh, or your button was green in color in the previous release, it should also be green in color now. There should be no bug that maybe turns up, you know, the color of the button from green to blue. Uh, you wanna make sure the layout, the, the font size, the font style, everything is the same as the previous release. And there's no bug that's introduced that can change the font size of the font style. You want to make sure the, the look and feel of your application is always the same and it's always consistent. So we have a SaaS visual uh, tool that visually compares all these uh, screens, all the UI screens with the previous version of the screens and will make sure that the screens are always okay. In a, you know, there, are, there is no obvious bugs. There's no like logo change or there is no color of the button change unnecessarily uh, without, uh, you know, without intention. And it will point out all these changes to you when you're testing the application after development. Uh, there's also API testing and, and, and mobile testing. So again, as I said, these days there's a lot of applications, you know, being you know being uh, developed for mobile and being consumed on mobile. So uh, you know, amongst all these applications, you know, uh, there is also there's also so many different technologies that people use to develop these applications, these mobile applications. And SaaS Labs provides uh, a very uh, sophisticated way and a very uniform way to test all these applications, whether it's a, uh, it's a, it's a native uh, mobile application or it's a uh, hybrid application or it's a, it's a web application that opens up on a, on, a, you know, on, a, on a mobile browser. No matter what the application is, SaaS Labs offers a very seamless way to test all these different kinds of applications. Uh, and API testing, again, uh, a, you know, in, in the enterprise world, usually uh, in addition to UI testing and in, in addition to functional testing, there's a lot of APIs being used. A simple example could be, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about Amazon, uh, when you add something to the cart in Amazon or in Flipkart, behind the scenes, it's calling an API uh, to add that to the database. 
Now, how do you make sure that when you're testing Amazon and when you add something to a cart, not only is it visual in the, in the cart, but it's also added to the database so that when you submit the, uh, the, the payment, the, the item actually arrives at your house. So for that, there is a lot of emphasis on API testing and uh, Sauce Labs offers a seamless way to do API testing as well. So this is at a high level, different uh, offerings of Sauce Labs. Uh, you know, again, just to recap, you know, cross browser testing, low code testing, where it can enable somebody who doesn't know anything about automation uh, to create tests very, very rapidly. Uh, visual testing, where it can point out any kind of uh, visual changes that could have happened between different versions of your application. Uh, make you know, it'll ensure that your logo looks okay, your colors are okay, your font style is okay, your font size is okay, all the visual aspects are okay. Uh, we can also do mobile testing, native app testing. Uh, web browser testing uh, on for mobile applications. We can also do API testing. Uh, so this is a, you know, and, and there's a few other, uh, you know, uh, ancillary functionalities that we provide, for example, you know, yes, com you know comprehensive reporting. Uh, so let's say you're doing the testing, whether it's a mobile app or whether it's a, a visual testing or, you know, or API testing, whatever it is, you want to make sure that whenever there's errors, those errors are reported in an appropriate way. Uh, so we have a comprehensive error reporting and management error management uh, 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 platform as well. Um, so that that's at a high, you know that, that's a high level and a complete overview of uh, what Sauce Labs is. And and just to uh, you know just just FII you know just to add to this point, we had met as I said two months ago, and uh, I think we had met a few you know we had talked to a few specific people who were interested. Uh, in uh, in trying out or in using this platform, um, I don't know if we have connected since then. I don't believe we have connected since then. So I just want to you know throw it out uh, uh, you know and and make sure that we are still have, available for any kind of questions. We are still available to uh, to work with you. Uh, so let us know uh, if you have any questions or if you want to uh, you know if you want to take any next steps with us. We are available for for that as well. So thanks so much, guys, uh, for for your time. That concludes my, my presentation. Thank you, Krishna. Thanks for uh, the insights into the automate, automatic uh, testing part of it. I think it looked very familiar for most of uh, a lot of our people who probably had the dialogue with you. Any questions, members, if you have something for Krishna, please, you still have some time to move with the other speaker. But if you have some questions, any questions, I think we have been shared his mail ID also. Uh, on the chat. So please note that and if uh, if you can connect with him. Okay. So Krishna, I think people will definitely get connected with you on your mail and it was good to have you here again. Uh, thank you for being there in the synergy itself. So we take this on. Uh, so I have with me uh, the next segment from uh, just a sec. So we have this second presentation uh, from uh, Mr. Shailesh Rangari. Shailesh Rangari, the topic is engaging and elevating with Zoom. So as you are aware, I mean, we are using the platform regularly. So Mr. Shailesh Rangari is being uh, in the United, Unified Communication Video Conferencing Industry for 14 plus years, uh, with uh, having spent most of his career with Reliance Communications, Vpro, Trimax, IT Infra, PeopleLink and Polycom, and now Zoom. So we are in good hands. So over to you, Shalish. Yeah, thank you. I hope uh, you're able to hear me loud and clear. Absolutely. Kostu, right. Yeah, so uh, hi team. Um, thanks Kostu for that uh, quick introduction. So hi team, myself, Shailesh, and I'm very much sure that uh, no one on this call, maybe like, you know, I assume we are around 63 people. No one uh, is somebody who haven't heard of Zoom. So right from the kids uh, to the, uh, like, you know, the, the older generation, everyone is heard of Zoom. And trust me, this is one application which really doesn't need any kind of a training. And uh, like, you know, yes, uh, Zoom got evolved uh, during the pandemic. I do understand because uh, that's the period when people do understood the meaning of actual working. See, the, the, the only way of working was not that, you know, Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday, you are in your office nine to five in front of your boss and you're working. And that's the reason uh, it means that you're working. That's not the way we work actually now. So after like, you know, March 2020, the pandemic, when it hit on, uh, the things have changed. And what we have saw uh, was a different world altogether. I can be very sure about it because even I'm into the video industry for 14. So I have seen the draft 
drastic change had happened. So earlier way of communication was very much simple. Uh, our life, the people who are in metro, they can understand. Uh, reaching office at nine o'clock uh, from a hectic uh, traveling, and then have a sip of a coffee and uh, go to the conference room, do the video calling, hang up and come back to your desk, and then you have a lunch break or um, the great Indian sutta break, and all that used to happen. But now the things have changed. We people get up at seven o'clock. We have a good time for our health. We go for a jogging, and we spend and uh, like you know we sit at nine o'clock hour in front of the laptop, and we we do the collaboration. And collaboration is much more important part of our life now. So any business, like, you know, the way we are on this uh, the consortium right now, this is what video communication is all about. And I'm very much sure that uh, this kind of a video quality and experience, uh, you will not get, get in on, like, you know, I'm not uh, saying anything wrong about anyone. Uh, everyone is like, you know, it's good in their own shape. But trust me, this kind of an quality and experience, uh, if you ask me, it's, it's very rare. The kind of uh, protocols, what we use on this backbone, it's important. And uh, collaboration uh, is, is something which is most important factor. Uh, when you go and uh, speak to your internal team members, when it's about learning and development or it's training or it's communicating any new product introduction, you have to collaborate. See, muting your video and doing a conversation, that doesn't bring any elegance, actually. The moment you unmute your video, when you talk, that's established the communication. And Zoom does that. And uh, like, you know, uh, today, like, you know, we, we are in very uncertain time today, if you ask me, like, you know, uh, we didn't thought that there will be a third wave. And while we are talking, I'm not very sure there is some another virus getting created, and its name, we don't know really. So things have changed. Uh, Zoom is an important backbone. And I would really uh, love that, you know, it has some great, uh, fabulous, uh, I would say, functionality is available. Uh, the one which is right now we are using is called the webinar functionality. Uh, we have uh, chats functionality available. Like, you know, if there is an organization who have adopted Zoom uh, and there are only 10 licenses, you really don't have to worry because the whole of an organization can use the chat functionality. So you can create the channels, you can create your, I would say, uh, groups where you can uh, talk about your product or like, you know, your, your engagement or anything, a program which you are working on. So that is something which is available. So I'll just, I won't uh, make you bored for next 15 minutes. I'll just run through a quick slides. You can understand if you have any kind of a query, I will request Pinky to drop my email ID and phone number. And if in future, if you want to get in touch with me, please feel that. And I'm managing the channel. So my job is to talk to you people, uh, make you comfortable and understand your query and understand the query of the customer to resolve as soon as possible. So I'll just start my presentation. Uh, Kostu, uh, a small help. Uh, yes, just let yes. me know if you are able to see my presentation. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yes, I'll just, visible. Uh, yeah, I'll just, yeah, I'll just make a presenter. Yeah, sure. Yeah, good to go. So I, I just spoke about a year of change. So it's not year of change now. Actually, um, it's it's two years what we are living in right now. So it's 2022 and we people are at home. So like, you know, it's it's a, a different and uncertain time. And Zoom has played a very integral part in, in establishing the communication, not only the birthday celebrations and like, you know, communication, but yes, uh, the businesses have grew uh, because of uh, like, you know, people are heavily adopting uh, like, you know, video conferencing. And if you ask me like, you know, Zoom 67% uh, heavy adoption had happened during this and this is one of the killer app today in the market because when it, and it's a synonym like you know the way earlier it was like uh, uh, sir xerox de dj so it was not a xerox it was a photocopying but people used to started calling xerox and still people do that so when it comes of video communication i have seen people saying uh, let's connect on zoom they don't say that let's connect on video conference but they say let's connect on zoom and most of the uh, education institutes today if you ask me or most of the banking uh, and the government institutes have also adopted the zoom actually so the workplace is uh, everywhere, as I said, not in an office, not in front of your boss. That doesn't mean you are not working. You are at home. You are you can be at any place. People have shifted to their native towns and they are working from there. So what we have learned is that not in office doesn't mean that you're not working. And earlier when we people used to say that, sir, I will do work from home. People used to think that, you know, they are enjoying their time at home. It's not like that people are working and really hard working, actually. So the workplace is everywhere. And uh, this is a study which has been done by Gartner. Everyone knows what Gartner is all about. So they have seen that, you know, the comfort of being at home and not traveling and then giving your 100% to your work, uh, they're, they're, I would say they have improved their performance. And that is something which had come from the study of Gartner. And uh, that's the reason I have uh, shared the slides to you also. 
um, it's important to communicate and from the way you communicate, that doesn't matter, which I have spoken. The best thing about Zoom is that, you know, it's it's built on the uh, video first as in platform. So like, you know, uh, the, the central architecture is the video and the rest of the applications have been, uh, I would say, developed or deployed around the video. So when we talk about the webinar, the one which we are right now, you talk about chat, phone, audio, meetings, you know, everything is around the communication platform, which is available from Zoom. And not only the uh, the communication platform in front of the laptop, but when we go back to our offices, definitely you have the video conferencing rooms, uh, maybe 20, 25 seater, 10 seater, five seater, coffee rooms, small rooms, everything. Yes, you can do the video communication from there. So the, the name of that particular product being called as a Zoom room. And we have ecosystem partner, like, you know, you can say Polycom or Logitech, or if you ask me like D10, these are the organizations which have the hardware peripherals. You can deploy the Zoom room uh, functionality on top of it, and then you can use that. So people who are at home and in front of the laptop, when they go back to office, they should not feel alienated that what kind of a video application we are using in our offices, in their off like you no know, meeting rooms. Uh, Zoom room gives the very native and a very friendly equality when you go into the Zoom room, or as in, I would say, in your conference room, actually. And the best part is we have the SDKs and the APIs available. So if you ask me, like, you know, you must have saw a few of the ads where you have the banking video kiosk that is being built on the back end of, uh, I would say, uh, video SDK, which is available from Zoom. The biggest brand name, which, uh, like, you know, everyone is knowing about is Baiju. So they are using our platform for video communication. And there are so many other, uh, like, you know, uh, organizations which have heavily adopted Zoom, but I won't be able to take the name because of the NDA being signed on. So that's the reason. But there are, if you have any use case, which is like, you know, in, in banking or government or law, uh, like, you know, any any BFSI, if you ask me, retail, uh, Zoom can play a very integrate, integral part because if you are at home and you want to do a shopping and definitely you want to have a look at the feel of the product, you just do a video calling with the shop and then you can see the product um, have a 360 degree view of it real time and then you can take a choose of that so now we have a video sdks sdks and apis available when you go back to the offices again you have a zoom application available in your conference rooms and definitely when you are at home like right now at this point of time we have all and everything available onto our zoom application and uh, like you know uh, we don't compete with uh, like you know all all our competitors but we complement our technology with them so let it be cisco let it be polycom or google any application if they want to integrate or in fact they want to communicate with us the doors are always open and we can do the integration with them also and why is a single platform so important so the most important thing is like you know it should not be a hardware dependent it's 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 like you know not to be like you know difficult to deploy that is something which every it person uh, looks for it so you know it's it's not hardware dependent and it's it's not very difficult to deploy as i said to you um, like you know anyone and any one person can use and how to like you know uh, use this particular application how to do the sharing or mute unmute all that functionality is very easy to understand you really don't require any kind of a cookbook that you know how to know and understand how to use a zoom application and it's it's like the experience let it be your like you know in front of your laptop or once you go to your offices and use the zoom room functionality in your office it will be the same only so that is something which is most important here and uh, it's a next generation cloud architecture. It's a little technical, but I'll just give you that the cloud architecture is completely different and it's not something which is being used in an old legacy. The best part is like, you know, I can choose my path from where the data is going to flow. So, you no, know, most of the people who are in front of the laptop right now, if you go on the top left, there is a green icon, small icon will be there. Uh, not right now if you do it, but if post this call, if you just click on it, it will actually show that from which data center the traffic is moving. So that one thing which was there in our mind that, you know, the data is going through the China, that was a misconception and you can actually choose from where your data wants to have because whenever you took first thing uh, anything which goes to the internet the first thing is is it secure and trust me uh, zoom is amazingly secure application today and the best of the protocols being used in terms of when it comes of a security actually and it's agile uh, it has a seamless integration as i said to you when it comes about the video sdks and apis if you want to club a video into an, an in, in in any kind of a platform yes definitely it is something which is possible 
and this is a little more about it so so it's a one platform uh, it's it's for phone chat meetings and webinars all that in within the one single platform so as i said you it's a one video like you no know, video first communication platform architecture uh, in fact you can go to the uh, marketplace.zoom.us and you can see there are around 1000 plus applications are playable which can be integrated with a zoom and you know uh, with your current hardware investment still a zoom can be used so i i, I remember the old school was like you know we used to have a hardware and point in in our offices and used to dial the ip address and getting connected uh, that was an sc23 and sip kind of a way of doing the video calling but today if you want you can use the same hardware and and you can connect to zoom also so that is also something which is available and you know you you can have 10000s of users and they can come from any 40 plus countries which is available so you no know, it's it's very easy to use and it's it's robust when it comes of security communication and uh, data so this is a little more about that you know power of one one single application and you have a phone uh, integrated to that you have zoom rooms and you have chats webinars even most of the functionalities are available under one umbrella itself of zoom actually and um, this is little more uh, like you know i've uh, put it then so, so it's it's stable it's reliable uh, it's cloud native and uh, as i said you uh, it's it's built on a video first communication so rest of the things is jointly integrated when it comes of chat or a phone or rest of the things so that's how exactly it is so and uh, the most important topic is the security so uh, the the security model overview is that you know this is soc2 uh, compliant and then we have a ssl encryption which is available onto this um, uh, people have a, a little maybe like you know there was a episode which was being called as a zoom bombing but it 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 happened because like you know people misused those uh, like you know uh, meeting invites and they have shared that meeting invites to other people and that's how the zoom bombing had happened but today if you ask me like you know uh, the application what we have today is aes 256 bit gcm encryption so it's most advanced encryption standard which is available today um like as i said you like you know this video application can be used in any kind of a platform whether it's a government healthcare you know all those so when we talk about healthcare it's hipaa compliant which is like you know us body for like you know when it comes of any application being used so that is hipaa compliant available and it's in, importantly it is a fedram moderation authorization available so if somebody wants to to talk about the video conferencing or zoom and customer asks about the queries regarding the security on on top of it please do let me know and i can help them understanding what all um, methodologies are being used when we deploy the uh, zoom into their platform so all the video meetings and the the current webinar or whatever the webinar we do they they are end to end encrypted which is available as i said you that you know the data routing protocol is also deployed so you can actually choose from where you want your data to be traveled so you know if 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 you want that you know the origination should be from the hyderabad data center of zoom or of mumbai that you can really choose so that functionality is also available onto the zoom itself and uh, your your you know you can use your meetings it's to be a end to end encryption that is also something which is available with the user itself so you know this is one application which is very easy to use and all the most of the things which is related to the security or the mode of way you want to deploy it it's all available with the administrator of that particular organization itself so it's not something which is binded to the administrator with the zoom but the people who are deploying and hosting into their platform they can use themselves itself uh, the way they want actually so this is something which is there and these are the few use cases which i have shown you uh, when it talks about the media it's available healthcare yeah definitely we do have available so uh, most of the people cannot travel uh, to the do the uh, like you know their hospitals or the clinics so they can connect over the video and uh, they can uh, do the prescription or like you know they can show to the doctor that is education definitely uh, the big name which i have already told you by juice and there are other many organizations in the education industry they are using also the zoom platform when it comes of uh, like you know delivering the education to the kids and uh, financial services as i mm -hmm. said you like you know in yeah. banking or uh, i would say the video kiosk or atms they are also the financial services uh, in the bfsi segment we do have a presence of label government as in law justice uh, maybe most of the you you must have seen like you know most of the co courts have started doing virtual hearing so like you know the people can be at their respective locations and they don't have to really come to the court for the hearing so you no know, that way also it can be used um, you have seen the videos of uh, mr modi who really loves to 
have a video communication so you know, zoom also is being part of that particular technology also over there and fitness which is uh, like you know people have started using like you know cooking or maybe i would say fitness and there are so many personal things which people have started using zoom as an uh, reaching out to the larger audience not restricting themselves only for a face to face video communication so uh, for life for work and for connecting so that is something which is zoom is available for so that is all from uh, my side i hope uh, uh, if if you have any questions, do let me know, team, and I'm happy to answer your queries. And I hope this presentation was meaningful for you. And uh, I'll just end my presentation over here. So over to you, Kostub, and uh, team. Thank if you, you have any questions, please feel to. Yes, members. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I them. have a question. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone wants to join the Zoom call from his mobile phone, how can right. you? Do it? um the meeting invite will come voice, to your mobile voice voice only no no video or like say i mean he's got a simple phone you know no smartphone then how does he join so there is a, or a landline or a landline so there is a pstn line like you know there is a adoption which has to be done so you have a pstn uh, calling which has to be get enabled so it's a license which oh, has yeah. to be on the back end and then that way you can join the meeting so like you know in particularly if you ask me on my my uh, zoom license there is a pstn calling capabilities available so if somebody wants to join into my meeting if the meetings which i schedule uh, they can use a zoom application that is something which is a one way if somebody wants to join from a hardware that is also something which is possible and if it's a phone call so they will just dial the meet like you know the dial in number of my meeting id through the phone and then it will be getting connected so that is being actually called as a, a zoom phone application which is uh, getting introduced in india but right now if in india you want to join you have to dial uh, the the uh, non india numbers actually that is something which is there because of uh, some challenges of try guidelines which you understand that's the reason but pretty soon we will have that capability available on so from mobile from laptop through zoom, like you know zoom room application or through your phone or a pstn or a landline all the four or five like you know methodologies of connecting into a call is available with zoom rajeshi but right now it is not available right as i understand it's it's not available through the dialing of an India number, though if you want to dial that, but that will be uh, uh, like you know heavily built kind of. It's, it's it's will be too high metered for you if you ask me. So it's a US number or something like that. Yeah, it yeah. will be plus one kind of that that way it will be there because you understand uh, if you want to bring the PS team capability onto an application, you require the uh, guidelines mandatory from the try actually. So we have already applied and it, and pretty soon uh, the Zoom for like you know the uh, the capability will be available also. Yeah, but I'm a bit surprised. You see, even company like free conferencing allow you know they have got India number. Mm -hmm. So you can do right now that, but mostly now everyone goes through the mobile data. If you ask me like today, even most of the people started calling me over the WhatsApp uh, rather than doing the, like, you know, the SIM calls, which the people earlier used to prefer. So now people have started adopting data heavily and uh, the old school of methodology of joining into the meeting through the landline, or I would say PST in calling has a, a little old school now, if you ask me, Rajeshji. Yeah, that is true. But suppose someone wants to have only audio conferencing, then do you have any choice? audio conferencing so like i can get back to you if if you uh, like you know uh, allow me a little more time and then i can come back and i can update you so i can take your contact number from uh, pinky and then i can reach out to you and i can uh, like you know correspond to your your query and doubt okay thank you sure rajesh uh, any more questions yeah yeah sure sneha yeah, uh, Sharish, uh, first of all, it was a nice presentation and we all know that yes, yeah, Zoom is helping us nowadays. And uh, But I would like to know that I am using GoToMeeting also for my training sessions. And what I observed, and even I have Google on for the same, that Zoom uses 50% more bandwidth than the GoToMeeting, which actually uh, makes some kind of a lag or the lower in the quality segment. So... Uh I have to relook at because trust me, if you ask me, uh, Zoom actually uses us very minimal bandwidth when it comes to video communication. And in fact, you can unmute your videos also whenever you want. In fact, the kind of a protocols which has been used, it's a one-to-one -one communication. So if you, I, I can't play around right now with this application in front of no, you because check, then it will impact. The technical this thing because Zoom definitely uses some more bandwidth than the GoToMeeting. Another thing is that why we switch to GoToMeeting is because $12 Zoom is uh, uh, giving us 100 participants. 
participants, right? Whereas uh, GoToMeeting is giving a fourteen dollar for a one hundred and fifty participants. So okay, there are uh, there are some differences. So okay, fine, Sne. I can I can. Sure, sure, sure. No problem, Sne. So I, I can I, connect I... on a one to one call for the same cause. Yes, for my training sessions, even uh, we are in uh, we are looking for you know if there is another option or we can get some better solution for it. Absolutely, definitely, Sne. I would love to answer those queries for you. And when it comes sure. of comparing between the, um, I would say, the the consumption of the bandwidth when it comes of uh, the competitor, the name you have taken, and uh, about Zoom, I I really doubt about that. But yeah, definitely, I will do analyze it, and uh, I can come back to you, Sne. Not a problem. Yeah, to sure. Me. Sure. Thank you. So, before we move on, any more questions, please? So I think uh, we'll again connect with you on mail. We'll be on mail. Uh, all, all those who have questions and these queries, uh, please get on with the Shadesh on the mail and you can take it one to one. I'm sure again, uh, if I speak uh, about this on behalf of the uh, members itself, that though it seemingly is very easy, I mean, it's, there's some, so much beyond the 40, 50 minutes of the free time that we always get into a Zoom call in a Jiffy. So there's a lot more to know about this if we could actually arrange some kind of trainings and other sessions if you can have that interaction with most of the members i think that will be something we should look forward to so sure. i think we can work out something on that front uh definitely so uh thank you shalish thank you for being here and uh, very interesting session so this is uh let me actually get you a proper a very small surprise packet for you there is a lot of talent available within our members. And since we are on Zoom, there is another gentleman who uses a different kind of Zoom. He uses his Zoom lenses because he's a wild, wildlife photographer himself. So let me just get you a brief uh, for Krishnakan Mathuria. Krishnakan, if you're there, I, he has some announcement to make and it's a surprise packet because nobody knew about this. So Krishnakan, over to you. You have uh, two minutes to really do I... Uh, hi, Kosto. Hi, friends. Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for, you know, slotting me in. Uh, it was just a quick discussion I was having with Tushar. Uh, I was just telling him that uh, I'm going to have one session. So I, uh, to all friends, uh, uh, just a quick background. Uh, of course, you know, I belong to the IT fraternity, but again, as a hobby, um, uh, I do a lot of wildlife photography. Uh, I will say a, a semi-professional and uh, i've been doing that for last uh, 10 years now uh, so uh, the agenda is just wanted to inform and update you guys saturday 8 30 in the evening uh, india time i have an interview of my photography journey uh, by an international travel company so i'll i'll be sharing my experiences my lot of my mm -hmm. best pictures uh, and you know uh, do's and don'ts so Anyone uh, who wants to pursue photography as a hobby um, or even, you know, want to get into wildlife photography, uh, I think it, it's going to be interesting because uh, all my 10 years of learning, I'm going to put in that uh, uh, session, uh, you know, in that presentation. And I'm sure a lot of guys uh, already know, uh, you know, uh, that I, I have done some very decent uh, towards them photography. So I'm going to share everything. So it will be great to have you guys over or even if your children wants to join in, I think it will be a good motivation for them to you know, think about some alternate careers as well. So yeah, that's that. Thank you so much, Kostu, for- Thank you. Know, Thank you, KK. Thought. I hope you're not thinking of an alternative career. We need <laughs> you here. <laughs> uh, certainly not, uh, but that is something it really gives me a, a lot of time to think when I'm in right, the wild. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you, KK. Thanks so much. Thanks, thanks so much. Okay. Bye. So moving about, moving ahead now, uh, coming back to uh, uh, the next speaker, uh, we have Mr. Prashant GJ from Technomind. Uh, the topic of the presentation is the post-pandemic business opportunities for all in Endpoint. So Prashant is an award-winning innovative senior sales and business management executive with over 20 years of progressive leadership experience in different dimensions of IT, including software and hardware spanning across Endpoints, server storage, security, and virtualization domains. Uh, so without really wasting any more time, uh, let me ask Mr. Prashant. Prashant, it's all yours. Hey, 
thank you, Costa, and uh, thanks to the ASR team uh, for uh, hosting me here. So <clears throat> I, I think I see a lot of names out here um, who, who, who know me and who've heard me speak in the past. But I also see a lot of names um, which are new. So I guess uh, it'll be a good time for me to share some of my views. Uh, uh, so let me let me quickly get onto it. I think um, can I share the screen? I just share the screen, and you can confirm to me in a second if you're able to uh, see the screen. Uh, just give me a second. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. So just to give you a quick, quick background about uh, uh, the company I represent, uh, I represent this company called Technopine. Uh, some of you may have heard of it. Some of you may not have heard of it. Um, uh, we are a, we are what we call as a specialist uh, uh, distributor. Uh, why do we call ourselves specialist? Uh, two reasons. Uh, one, uh, we specialize in the area of uh, data. That means uh, technologies uh, around data, data management, or handling the data, treating the data, uh, preserving the data, making the data available uh, as and when you need it, uh, securing the data. These are all some of the uh, uh, areas of technologies that we focus on and we specialize in. Uh, the reason we chose to be in the area of data is data is one area um, which is not yet commoditized. So every other aspects of IT, uh, uh, spectrum is to a great extent commoditized, uh, which means uh, for for salespeople like us, everyone on this call, I'm assuming, are sales guys, uh, because they're all they're all representing the SI community. Uh, uh, any any opportunity which gives us a, a chance to solve uh, challenges for the customer, and data is one area which is which is throwing up a lot of challenges for customers. Um, it is it is business opportunities for salespeople for us. The more the challenges, the more the chances for us to uh, go and position solutions. And that is the reason that we've chosen to be in the area of data. Uh, the other is, uh, the reason we call ourselves specialist is uh, we specialize in, in the way uh, in which we build the go-to-market uh, uh, for a lot of our uh, technology uh, partners, um, our technology vendors. So every vendor we represent uh, we, we sort of build the uh, market entry strategy. We help them grow over over the years. Uh, we help them penetrate further if they're already been in the Indian market, uh, penetrate deeper, penetrate wider, uh, and so on and so forth. And so that's our that's our specialty. So that's a brief background. Uh, my name is Prashant, and and I'm in the role of a co-founder and CEO of uh, Technobind. We're about uh, uh, close to about ten years old as a company right now. Uh, growing significantly uh, at over 40% CAGR over the last 10 years, and and um, and I am really excited about the the last few years that we've seen, the last couple of years that we've seen, and and what is in uh, uh, what is in future for us. Simply because uh, the challenges are, are are never ending, and it's only going to explode. Um, and and we at Technobind like that there are challenges for customers because it gives us an opportunity to go and solve them. So, so the growth is only going to be much, much bigger for not only for Technobind, I'm sure it's there for everybody on this call as well. So, <clears throat> so this slide basically talks about what we're seeing every day around us, right? And it, there, there are a lot of things which keep getting added to this particular uh, set of things. Uh, uh, cloud, IoT, mobility, bring your own device, um, uh, AI, ML, RPAs, uh, analytics. But if you look at it, at, at the center of everything is uh, uh, data, um, and and data is all pervasive, and um, that itself gives us a significant opportunity. Uh, why is that so? Uh, because one thing what is what is struggling to keep a pace with the with with how the overall IT uh, scenario is evolving is the governance around data. Uh, governance is a very wide word. Uh, I'll not get into what exactly is governance, but you can think of governance as uh, uh, some of the things what I said, right? How and what are the policies? What are the frameworks um, uh, in which I manage my data? 
uh, uh, the, how I actually keep my data secure, uh, make my data available to any user um, uh, as it may be required, and 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 so on and so forth. Right. So that's that's the challenge that we are looking at a very very high level, and what we believe is what brings us to what I call as the business opportunity or the market opportunity, because eventually. Uh, for all we businessmen or salespeople, as as I like to call it, it's all about the business opportunity, right? So technologies are secondary, uh, but it's what the market opportunity, the business opportunity brings to the table is what is primary for us as businessmen, right? So that's that's what I'm trying to uh, uh, highlight, and this this is what we like ourselves to be called as. We're helping uh, customers uh, manage their data over its life cycle. So some of the things, first things, uh, I, I've covered most of it, uh, just run through it. I'm not gonna uh, uh, run through each and every point, but but I think a snapshot is what is seen on the uh, slide. This is for people who who, who sort of are uh, getting exposed to Technobind for, for the first time. Uh, but a lot of people here are, are have known Technobind uh, over the years, right? Uh, some of the products that we carry uh, are in this range, uh, uh, are, are slotted into these buckets, uh, storage, protection, data security, and data management. Uh, I'm not going to get into the products because that's not what my agenda is today. Uh, like what I had, uh, uh, what my team had shared with the organizers of this meeting today, I am keeping myself uh, specific to, to the area of um, uh, endpoints and uh, what the opportunity is around the endpoints right uh, but what needs to be done is needs to be done this is some of the products that we carry uh, again most of it a lot of you may be aware uh, some of them are, are new but but really have had extremely good traction with some of the partners uh, including some of the partners here in this uh, event itself and we've been able to uh, build multi-million dollar businesses for a lot of these products um, uh, from scratch kind of thing uh, some of the customers that we've reached uh, through through partners like you out on this call, uh, it, it 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 spans the who's who of the market uh, across uh, verticals, uh, across segments, across regions. So so that's a good thing, which means that the challenges around data is is all pervasive. Uh, whether the company is a large company, whether the company is into uh, telecom, BFSI, government, retail. Um, the challenge is equally applicable. Whether the company is a SMB or a mid-market or an enterprise, the, comp the, the challenges are equally uh, uh, important or equally relevant. So which means that you, if you may be a partner who's focusing on the SMB segment, you may be a partner who's focusing on the education segment or the retail segment, or who's got a stronghold into the manufacturing or the BFS segment, the opportunity is there for all of us. But what is the reality? is it's a crowded market, right? As all sales guys, uh, we always need to uh, find out a niche for ourselves and, and figure out uh, uh, how do I stand out? Uh, each of your each of you businessmen out there uh, must have, I would have carved out a niche for yourself. And I'm sure uh, uh, you are standing out in your own way. But as the markets are changing, as the gentleman from Zoom was talking about, how life has changed over the last couple of years. And believe me, it is only gonna change much, much drastically over the next two to three years as well. So it's important to constantly evolve and find ourselves and, and the niche, what will help me stand out. I need to be known for something. I, as an organization, need to be known for something. And, and this also is a very dynamic thing. It keeps changing, it keeps, it keeps um, uh, uh, increasing in size, the opportunity, and it, it creeps um, uh, ship goalposts keeps shifting, so we need to be very dynamic in terms of our approach. And but but the bottom line is, what do I do differently from my fellow competitors in the market, um, which makes me stand out? Right? Uh, gone are the days wherein 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 as a partner I could go and say, hey, I'm I'm a, a Cisco Gold partner. I'm I'm a ABC vendors, ABC Technologies uh, platinum partner. Or I'm the largest partner of. XYZ brand in 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 uh, uh, Mumbai city and so on and so forth, right? There's those those real value coming out of it. Uh, the value all comes out in terms of what's the problem that you're trying to solve for the customer. Are you are you in line 
with an understanding of what the customer's business is and and what's his problem on that particular day 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 to day uh, business uh, this may look like a very 60000 feet uh, statement and you you would say hey this is what all marketing gurus say right uh, i are you are you talking from a customer's perspective do you understand customer's business but if i have to bring it down to to the lowest level and and uh, figure out if i am a sales guy uh, how how will i look at it or, or let me put it this way uh, we are technobind whenever we engage with partner and uh, you partners and your sales reps there is a constant conversation uh, philosophy that we use it is about trying to understand or trying to put into uh, his mind about what business problem is this particular technology solving for the customer what happens if this technology is not bought by the customer will the sky fall uh, will the heavens fall down for him will his business come down if it is yes then it means it's a very very uh, potential uh, product for you to take into the market if it is not then then you have secondary thoughts and and you figure it out uh, and so on and so forth right and this is this is basically what we call as a use case approach right? use case based approach um, basically it's all about aligning identifying what business pain point uh, are we talking uh, uh, do we have an understanding of the business pain point for a customer and do we have a technology which we can align with the customer to solve that specific business problem of us and 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 the next step is uh, to who all to which other customers is this business problem applicable i'll give you a very i, I have enough case studies within technobind wherein we've adopted this uh, uh, philosophy over the years and we we've, we've had extremely good successes be it in the retail be it in pharma be it in e-commerce uh, be it in the uh, bfsi segment specifically let's assume that in micro segment like an insurance vertical we've had a number of um, uh, uh, opportunities where we've actually put to use this and then we we hit gold uh, uh, let me give you one example uh, because we're on the topic of endpoints um, uh, today, right? Uh, let me go back to this. Before I come to the next slide, I'll give you this real life example, which happened about four or five years back. Uh, a lot of you know that we are a distributor uh, for uh, Drua, uh, uh, one of the one of one of a very nice and elegant uh, endpoint backup. So they, in fact, they were the pioneers of endpoint backup. Uh, they were the ones who actually uh, uh, popularized uh, endpoint and cloud data backup way back in 2014-15, right? One of our first customers uh, uh, for Drua uh, was a customer in uh, uh, Bangalore uh, in in the in the retail space, right? Uh, so this customer in the fashion industry, uh, headquartered in Bangalore, uh, ran ran about 700 stores. In fact, they've grown to about 1,000 stores at this point of time. But six years back or five years back, they had about 700 stores uh, across the country, including tier two, tier three cities like uh, Jhansi, Mira, Trichy. Uh, Kanur, uh, Siliguri, and, and stuff like that. They used to have one or two uh, retail stores in each of these uh, locations. Each of the retail stores had anywhere between two to five um, endpoint devices, uh, which were connected to, to, to their headquarters, corporate headquarters back in Bangalore, uh, through a very, very small uh, feeble line, feeble data link, which was available at that point of time. And their software, ERP software that they were using required uh, and they were not really using servers or anything at their endpoints, and they required the data at the end of the day uh, to be backed up to their uh, uh, head office data center. But what, what was happening was data was not getting backed up, right? Uh, so we went in and we spoke about, and this was this was a challenge for the customer. Uh, I'm not going to get into the depths of the technology and how we made it change because that's not the agenda of today's meeting. We just went in. Uh, we, we we had an understanding of the problem. Uh, we, we pitched a solution, did the requisites, the demo, POCs, uh, uh, evaluation ran for a few months, uh, and the deal closed. Uh, but what was important for us is we said, look, if this retail company, which which was I would call retail as a as a company with distributed uh, uh, environment, right? And today, distributed environment is is real real time today with work from home every single company is distributed environment. So the challenges was if this company, retail company with a distributed environment had this challenge and we could solve this problem, uh, and Drua is not an inexpensive solution, right? Uh, uh, it is pretty, pretty 
uh, expensive. It did, and but the customer valued the solution and bought that. Uh, if if the customer paid big money uh, because it solved the problem for them, so who else could be customers uh, to whom these challenges um, uh, were there? So we said obviously any customer with distributed environment, right, would 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 also have similar challenges. So the first set of uh, action items we did was we listed down the retail companies in India uh, that we knew of. Uh, very easy to do that. Uh, Google search, we did it. And we came up with a list of about 12, 13 uh, retail chains, but the uh, name and uh, some recognizable names. Uh, believe me, as a distributor, we did not have end customer connects because that's not our mandate. We did not enjoy any relationships with any of the customers listed in that 12, 13 list of endpoints, the retail companies. But what we knew was we knew partners who were selling into these accounts right we have new partners who were selling not necessarily software not necessarily backup software not necessarily endpoint uh, technology but something or the other they were selling in. that's the that's the data that we had we approached them and and through them by by using this use case based approach uh, we were able to actually close every single one of those clients and we were able to sell endpoint backup through partners like yours across the country, except for one customer, which we were not able to crack, um, uh, which is Future Group. Um, uh, but every single customer, be it Shopstop, uh, Titan, Cafe Coffee Day, uh, Pantaloon, Lifestyle, uh, all of them are our are, are, are customers today uh, on this particular thing. So what's the point I'm trying to make here? The point to try to make here is uh, uh, is that of what I call the swim lane approach, right? Uh, uh, it's it's about not not spraying spring bullets across the market and figuring out it's going to hit a few, but instead it's like swimming in that in your swim lane, right? I, I I'm not going all over the pool, but I know I'm swimming in just one direction up and down, and for which I have the best productivity that I can gain off. Uh, do a lot of research in terms of qualification, do a lot of research in terms of figuring out which is the segment, which are the customers in the segment. Do those customers have the business point, business pain point, which my technology is addressing? And then we went behind them and, and saw that. We repeated this kind of a thing, of course, for different technologies ranging from security to flash storage uh, uh, to, to a lot of other uh, data management solutions. To, to again uh, endpoint security solutions as well in segments like e-commerce, in segments like insurance, uh, in, in segments like uh, uh, pharma, uh, all of them we've repeated the success in, and, and that's that's been a great, great success for us at this point of time. So it's a very easy to say what are the business pain points, right? If I have to look at a very high level, say 60,000 feet uh, around the data, what, what's typically broadly classified as data challenges for customers today. Uh, data breaches, we're gonna be reading it day in, day out. Some of, some of the partners here I know have a security uh, practice. Uh, you know what your customers are saying. Um, data breaches are rampant, right? So, so that's that's one big uh, uh, play that we have in the market. Uh, data is moving everywhere, right? So that's another big play today, right? Uh, uh, with work from home, it is literally moving everywhere, right? Uh, earlier, a company used to have say uh, one head office, maybe 20 branch offices and five regional offices, three warehouses and so on and so forth. Today, a company has one head office and, and 10,000 branch offices because there's 10,000 homes in which their employees are are um, are working, right? So so the challenge is, is, is a completely unimaginable um, one, right? Technologies like Zoom or GoToMeeting or, or any of those things solve one aspect of it, which is the collaboration that you heard just now. Uh, from the gentleman before me, uh, but but the challenges around data specifically are even much bigger, right? How do I access the data and, and so on and so forth, right? What's the other big play that we see in the market today, right? The approach needs to change because data is no more residing only in the company's data center, right? Data is residing everywhere. Data is residing in the company's data center. Data is residing in the cloud. Data is residing in multiple clouds. Data is moving from one cloud to another. How do I actually put up a data governance policy encompassing these multiple locations where data is stored, right? That's another big issue that what is there today. And eventually you would have heard this, this, this phrase, data is the new aisle, data is the new currency over the last three, four years. It's been beaten to death by every marketeer that I know of. 
but it's real, right? What, what it means is every organization worth its salts is trying to monetize their data. You can only monetize your data if the data is stored, available, available in real time, available when you need it, where you need it, and, and so on and so forth. I'm not even going to the new age technologies like analytics and, and, and so on and so forth, which actually really help monetize the data. But if the company wants to monetize the data, the underlying infra, I'm assuming every partner on this call are from the infra uh, play perspective, the underlying infra itself needs to be souped up. It needs to be jacked up significantly. And that is a market opportunity for all of us, right? We've heard where things like data lakes, we've heard things like data warehouse platforms, right? Snowflakes is a big thing. Cloudera is a big thing today, right? What exactly are they doing for our customers? They're basically building an infra platform at the, at the back end, getting data from all kinds of uh, areas or all, all directions to, to ensure that the marketers within the company are able to monetize the data. So that's a big opportunity for us, even at the infra level to play around it. But but if I have to look into right. the minds of people within your customer organization, right? What would they be Thank telling, you. right? What what would be their uh, top use cases that that uh, uh, we are seeing, right? Some of them might be saying work from home means employees are accessing corporate networks from their homes, right? And I know VPN doesn't work. So what's the alternative? Is there a is there a much better secured way of um, uh, accessing the data? Somebody else may be saying I have a lot of uh, some other customer persona may be saying that I have a lot of knowledge workers uh, within my company with valuable data on their endpoints, and they are all in their homes, distributed environments. How do I protect the data? Right? Maybe we're talking about some kind of an encryption technologies that we can actually uh, talk about. Right? Uh, somebody's saying, I know my backup strategy is outdated, and I want to modernize it. But where do I start? I have a backup with the legacy backups of five, eight, 10 years available with me. It's all legacy, but where do I start, right? Ransomware, and that's a big thing today, right? I don't want to delve into it. Everybody knows of the, the opportunity, what ransomware brings in, whether it's from security or the backup uh, uh, perspective. Employees working from home, how do you give them IT support, right? That's a big, big challenge, right? Earlier, employees were in the uh, a corporate building, uh, somebody's operating system crashes, he just logs in a call with the IT support desk. That guy comes running to his desks or employee goes to the IT help desk uh, on one of the floors, gives his laptops in a few hours. Uh, uh, it's up and running and recovered and he's back to work. Yes, you lose a few hours, which, which a proper good endpoint backup can take care of it. The productivity loss can be stopped. But, but when you're at home, when maybe at hometown, how do you actually take care of this and ensure productivity loss is minimized? So how do I actually give um, uh, requisite IT support? That's a big challenge and that's hence, that's a big opportunity of remote support. Uh, secured remote support is what I would uh, call it, right? Cloud, security on cloud, accessing data on the cloud. Is there a very secure way of accessing the data on the cloud, right? Is there a secure way of accessing data from multiple clouds, right? Though that's all those things also, and so on and so forth. I just want to, I don't want to go through it. The, the slide says it all. So that's basically where we as TechnoBind are focusing on. And, and uh, when it comes to endpoints, right from uh, uh, doing your backup on endpoint, uh, encrypting your endpoints, protecting your endpoints from a pure security perspective, um, accessing your endpoints uh, through secured access, uh, supporting your endpoints uh, uh, through through secured support uh, uh, mechanism, and uh, and and so this this whole spectrum of products itself uh, is is a big chunk of market opportunity. And and in Technobind, the way we are taking it to the market, we are taking it as a stack approach. Because as businessmen, all of you are worried about the productivity of your sales guys. How do I ensure I, I, I ring out more juice from my, from my sales guys or the time they spend on the field, right? So one way to do it is when he's going and talking to a customer, if he's talking about the problems related to endpoint, right? He's saying, Mr. Customer, you've now got work from home in your office or you've got distributed work environment, you've got distributed offices, you've got distributed workforce, uh, just take one simple aspect of your IT setup, which is endpoints. These are the kind of challenges. Uh, how are you managing it? That's the simple question that he needs to ask, right? And, and just list down three, four, five challenges that we spoke of. 
and, and get the customer to think, right? You don't have to ask the customer for requirements. So you don't have to ask the customer for inquiries. The, the moment you actually make the customer aware of, of what kind of challenges the customer can be facing and tell him that you may have solutions for all of them, uh, you, 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 you have a great chance of converting that prospect into a real opportunity. What was I talking about the stack approach? Because if you go through the spectrum of products, a continuum of these products, so you're going and telling the customer about his endpoint challenges, and these challenges needs about four or five or six different products and technologies to meet it. He may not buy all the five, six at one shot, right? He may just buy one, two, three, but, but you've actually built a pipeline for the other four, right? He may buy the next quarter, the next financial year, the next budgeted year, and so on and so forth, but you will be the first. The way I look at it, and which is what I tell my sales guys and, and a lot of partners I meet is, if you're not talking this language with your customers, uh, be rest assured somebody else is right so so that's that's the that's the point i was trying to make and just a brief bit about Technobind, why we stand out where we try and uh, do that our approach when we engage with partners right though we are a distributor and you've seen a lot of distributors i'm sure you've worked with distributors over the last 20 years uh, uh, some of the partners here who have worked with us uh, can vouch for this uh, as a distributor our focus is uh, uh, we want to be a problem solver, right? Uh, we want to inculcate the language of solving problems to the sales reps of partner organization that we enable. For us, when we do partner enablement, it's not a PPT of a vendor wherein we go and talk about speeds and feeds, Gartner number one, uh, market shares, and so on and so forth. Because as sales guys, it really doesn't mean anything. As sales guys, we are only bothered about one thing. How do I generate more and more opportunities, right? Which moment I generate opportunities, eventually there is a funnel in which it can get converted into revenue. So but the best challenge is how do I generate opportunities? And the opportunities can, can be generated. Opportunities can be generated if we are uh, talking the language of solving problems for our customer. Uh, the second is focus, right? Uh, we're not, we're not experts, we do not have 10 hands or 10 heads, uh, like some of the mythological fee, uh, uh, personas, uh, with our limited bandwidth, with our limited energy, uh, we want to be focused. And we have chosen to focus in the area of data. We want to build expertise more and more in the area of data. And that is really helping us being really a subject matter expert in that particular thing. The next is about focusing on technologies which are disruptive or next generation, right? Which is the reason we do this is we're trying to help the partners help their customers stay ahead of the technology curve. And the end of it, what it means is we're trying to create value, right? We all call, a lot of us, for example, Technobind, we like ourselves to be called value-added distributors, right? Or our partners are called value-added resellers. Are we adding real value? And that's exactly what we are trying to say. And by, by talking this language of problem solving, the value in the eyes of the customer, whether it's a distributor like me or a partner like yours, would definitely go up a few notches ahead. And that would mean that you are standing out from the crowd, which is where we started uh, a few slides back. And that's that's basically what we are trying to do uh, uh, in the market. Uh, uh, this is what my marketing guy had put in. Sorry about it being too cheesy. Uh, uh, he, uh, he says, we can help you. We've been doing it consistently. Uh, uh, try us out, right? And that's, that's all I can say. So that's the uh, a quick pitch I had uh, from my side. Um, so over to you, back to you, Kasta. I don't know what's the logistics and mechanics of the event. Uh, questions now, later, I can yeah. uh, figure it out. Thank you. And I, I you. see messages which ask me to stop. So, but okay, sorry for overshooting my time. Not, not, not a problem, Prashant. Thank you so much of insight, yes. I think there is one more, uh, uh, I mean, there's somebody in person who wants to talk more about this. Uh, may I ask Shitich Kotak to take over the mic and please uh, let us know more about this. Uh, hi, everybody. Yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. I hope all is, uh, everyone is good in pandemic and we all are enjoying our Omicron days. Uh, <laughs> the reason I requested... Uh, the board to let me speak is uh, regarding something that we worked with Technobine. And uh, well, Prashant doesn't know I was supposed to speak like this. So Prashant, I hope you are there and you have not vanished after your presentation. Prashant, are you there? Yeah, I am there. I'm there, Kostar. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Okay, so Praveen Rege is not here. He had to rush uh, to one of his customers and uh, he sent me what I should speak for him, his text. So his text is, one of my customers wanted a disaster recovery solution. This company is the only one in India who does the kind of work they do. I can't disclose details because I work in cyber forensics and data is very sensitive and confidential and so is my customer name. But you understand that this, you will understand that this customer's SQL database is two terabytes, two TB, and they cannot afford downtime. Uh, his words, mm -hmm. I partnered with Shitaj to give the customer black box, but Shitaj suggested we use another solution from a global MNC, which will be a better fit for requirement. So basically he sent me only this much. So let me tell you my experience about this. So we took that MNC product from Technobind and used black box only to reduce license cost and ransomware protection. Technobind helped us implement, which they, any which ways they do for everyone, but the most important part comes now. The vendor, and this has happened just a few months ago, the vendor changed licensing policy to subscription. And when the product stopped working, they did not support us. They asked us to pay subscription for past three years, despite us having perpetual license and despite me knowing India head of this MNC personally, who refused to help. I spoke to Prashant just once. I just spoke to him once, his team not only got the product working again, but even never asked us for uh, support payment or for renewal. I had to tell Prashant, Bhaiya, tera subscription ka quotation to bhej. <laughs> that Prashant went out of his helper partner. We are thankful. I will recommend every member of Assert to engage with Technobind. Trustable, bankable, dependable, and able. Thank you again, Prashant, and congratulations for uh, gaining trust of my company. It's very difficult to please me. Everyone in Assert knows this. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Kshitish Bhai, for the nice words. Uh, uh, these are the kind of words which really push us to actually uh, do what we're doing, and it's a big endorsement of our philosophy. Uh, thank you so much, Kshitish. Uh, what you said means a lot to us. And I'll take it back. Uh, to my entire team. It's not me. My team deserves this uh, acknowledgement of yours. That's very kind of you, Prashant. An open, uh, an open invite to you. Uh, in case you need any help with any of the CIOs, because I have worked as a CIO for a few years in my life and very well connected, just give me a call. I'm more than happy, more than happy to connect you and do whatever I can do for you. And thank you so much once again. Thank you, Assert Board, for giving me this opportunity to speak about our sponsor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Prashant. Thank you, Shitaj. Uh, this is, of course, indeed uh, quite nice. It's just something which is uh, direct from the customer, and it really feels good. Thank you, Shitaj, again. So now we move on uh, to the uh, third speaker for us, and uh, that is... a. So let me call upon uh, Mr. Suman Chakravarti. Suman Chakravarti is the pre-sales vest for SOTI. Uh, the mobility management for the next generation is the presenter's presentation topic. Uh, Suman, over to you. Hey, uh, thanks. Thank you, everyone. Uh, yeah, hi, good evening. I decide Suman. Uh, yeah, let me just turn on my camera. Uh, just give me one moment. Let me know if you can see. Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right. Hi, everyone. Good evening to everyone. Uh, so my name is Suman Chakravarti. I am uh, working as a pre-sales consultant for SOTI India. I take care of the western part of India, Gujarat, uh, rest of Maharashtra, few uh, uh, you know opportunities in Southeast Asia as well as uh, Sri Lanka. I take care of being in this organization for last uh, uh, almost six years. Overall industry experience almost about. Uh, uh, 12 years of experience I'm having it. So uh, today I'm going to present uh, since uh, uh, the forum is already here and uh, the product which we have and uh, we are uh, catering our enterprise customers across the globe, which is into the unified endpoint management space. So uh, let me quickly, you know, uh, share my screen. 
I uh, rather, uh, you know, sharing uh, the PPT or uh, taking you with the slides, I would more, uh, you know, uh, presenting the, uh, the demonstration of the product, how it looks like and what exactly this product is doing across, uh, you know, across the globe in different uh, verticals like, uh, you know, in any, any uh, uh, mission critical environment we are, we are handling it. So before I go ahead, let me, let me just share it. Uh, Let me know if you can see my screen, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, just to give you an introduction uh, about SOTI. So SOTI is basically a uh, unified endpoint management solution, and we are, uh, you know, started the journey from uh, uh, from from Canada. It's a Canadian-based organization, heading by uh, Mr. Carl Rodriguez, is the CEO of this company. And uh, we have in presence in India, we have two offices in uh, the headquarter is in Gurgaon and one R&D center is in Kochi. So we, we are in the space to, you know, handle the mobility, uh, you know, part for different uh, mission critical environments, like irrespective of any verticals, like your, uh, your manufacturing, logistics, transport, airlines, healthcare, all these uh, major vertical where your device ecosystem. When I say device ecosystem, it can be an Android devices, it can be your iOS environment, Windows devices, Linux devices. So any complex device ecosystem, which is having an operating system, the solution is fully capable enough to handle your device management part, which we call it as mobile device management. We have the uh, capability to application management, which is, uh, you know, mobile application management, mobile content management, mobile email management. So all these major pillars of mobility we are handling uh, through our product uh, to all the verticals, whatever I just mentioned it. Uh, uh, you know, across the globe. So if I name some large customers in India precisely, so Department of Post is one of our largest customer. Uh, they're having, uh, you know, one of the critical business application running on all the all their Android devices, which usually the postman is using across Pan India location. They just go to any remote village and they open the bank account for the uh, different users. So that entire device, uh, uh, completely managed by SOTI in terms of security, in terms of the application managing and the device security. Everything has been doing by, uh, you know, SOTI. Uh, so similar way, we have other large category in different sectors we have. So the screen which you can see on my, uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the landing page of a solution, which is basically our uh, uh, identity solution, the, the first landing page of the solution where, this gives your end users to manage, uh, you know, uh, seamless uh, SSO experience to the applications, whatever you will be, you know, wanted to access uh, using our solution, SOTI identity, we call it. And from there, whatever app application you want to add it, you will get a SSO experience. Followed by an application, which is the main flagship product of our solution, which is Mobi Control, from where we have started the journey, actually. Uh, this solution is basically catering all the device management, application management, content management, and email management uh, using this solution. So this gives you the entire, uh, you know, flexibility for your administrator to manage all these things. Soti Excite is again a product for which we designed after gone through a lot of R&D into the market. Uh, you know, when we listen to different customers. They have issues like, you know, they, their devices are across the location, their applications are running on those devices. But at the time, like when any, anything goes wrong, anything happened wrong on that particular device or application, it takes a lot of time to troubleshoot. It takes a lot of time to report back those issues back to their IT service desk. They will, you know, uh, 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 logging the tickets. It takes time. So if it takes time, that means definitely you're losing productivity for your that, that particular business activity, whatever you're doing it. So just to reduce those parameters, we, we have this tool designed to not only just diagnose the issue, along with we, are, we, we design the capability to having an analytics feature. Which, which, which gives you a complete monitoring or, uh, you know, uh, uh, different data parameters you can analyze using the same solution. Coming to the uh, third component of the product which we have, which is SOTI Snap. 
Soti Snap is basically our, you know, rapid application development tool for Android and iOS as a platform. Nowadays, like you see, you know, any, any, any vertical where, you know, uh, still we are, you know, uh, capturing data on a, you know, uh, regular format or a traditional format of pen and paper, we are using it, or maybe you are using Google Forms or similar, uh, you know, uh, uh, format we are using to capture certain information. So this particular uh, this particular platform will give you uh, your your customers to get, give a flexibility to design applications for uh, Android and iOS within like few minutes or maybe few hours, and for that you doesn't require any you know separate uh, you know different skills or uh, programming background uh, programming background to you know get this uh, uh, application design you just have the canvas on the screen you drag and drop the widgets to to the canvas and your data collection or any set of data capture application precisely you can design it and you can connect that application to any of your backend repository using your rest api services you can have it for soti snap Soti Connect is our IoT management solution. So uh, when I say IoT, it's a huge space. Like you, you cannot count off devices. What are all, all co comes under that particular, you know, technology? So Soti has introduced this technology. It's been like a couple of years back, and we are uh, managing for now. It's like any industrial or any thermal-based printers. Precisely, we few brands which we are currently managing it, like Brothers, Sato, uh, if you have like Printronics, TSE Printronics, Honeywell. So all those industrial belt printers, those printers automation, their you know, battery status, you can this print head status, all these things can be managed using this soti connect as a solution. So not only just printers, we are also, you know designing this solution to, you know, have a, uh, you know, managing your different security cameras and other IoT platform devices, we, we have in the roadmap to manage using that. So just to summarize in terms of the entire product suite, which we have under SOTI One as a platform, which comes, which is Mobi Control, Excite, Snap, and uh, your SOTI Connect. Now I'll I'll give you a small glimpse of the you know the, the the main command control center for our solution, which is Mobi Control. This is one of our bread and butter where we have started the journey in this forte, and that's how the console will look like, which 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 gives you a single glass of paint for your administrators to manage wherever the devices are, what application need to be pushed, what type of policies you need to differently push to different devices, it be it a Android operating system, be it an iOS, be it a Windows device, be it a Linux platform. In fact, we we, we are the platform, we, we, we are the solution where we also managing the RFID specific for Zebra devices. We manage using the single glass of paint solution and, and your, your admin can manage it. Now you see, the, the, the console have some different grouping structure. So you, you create different groups, uh, be it any vertical. Now, if you are from a manufacturing vertical, you're using SAP application or you're using any in-house application, which are hosted on a very closed network kind of an environment where there is no internet traffic is allowed. So the devices you might be using as Zebra devices, or maybe you're using Honeywell devices to manage those. Now, the problem here is you might have different plants across the global location. Now, how you can have a seamless visibility or a granular control on those devices, how to manage it. So this is where your solution will come into picture and you can create different groups. And on those different groups, you can have different policies, different applications, different type of, uh, you know, uh, configurations and all the configuration will absolutely, you know, separate and will not at all conflict with each other. Now, the, it has some few charts and dashboard, which gives you a complete visibility. What are all, you know, uh, models and uh, devices uh, you have installed on your environment, how the operating systems currently running on those devices and other few parameters you can add it. Now you can see, as I mentioned, you have all set of devices you can manage using the single glass of pen, be it an Android device, be it a Linux device, you have you have Windows devices, you can manage MacBook devices. So all these devices in terms of like application management, you, you want to, you know, be restricting any policies on those devices, which are supported, of course, on that operating system will be very well managed using the same solution. Now, <clears throat> coming to our very unique USP, which we have the remote management. 
now the the days which we are going right now remote management is one of the key usp or the key solution every second customer is asking for because people are working from different locations they cannot send anybody to you know physically go to the office or ask the customers or ask their end user to you know ship their devices to the respective location it takes a lot of time so instead of doing that the solution will give you a seamless uh, remote functionality which we just you just click on that option and you have a seamless remote control functionality on the device it's it seems like the device is just next to you and you can you can literally you know you know uh, open the application just not the application level on few specific manufacturers which we have a very tight integration with the product where you have the control on the hardware button of the device so end to end device management when it comes to any complex ecosystem which your customers are having it i'm sure this solution will definitely give you an ease to manage all their endpoints and i mean specific to android ios uh, you know the macbooks your uh, windows machines uh, uh, you can manage using the same solution now uh, now when it comes to you know uh, uh, troubleshooting those issues now an user calls in uh, and he he is in his business hour time and an application goes down and maybe the application he tries to launch it gives him it gives some error message on the device now in a generic scenario he will call the it guy he will call the service desk team and you know this is what is going on he is not even you know providing the exact error message what is going on or what is coming up maybe the error comes up for a couple of second then it goes off so it takes time in fact the it team also takes time to you know troubleshoot those issues so what exactly this soti uh, remote management which is soti excite is you know uh, <clears throat> uh, helping those kind of a situation you just simply go ahead and you know take the remote control and from there you have an functionality to just create an incident within the same remote window where your device can be fully remoted and from there you can just simply live troubleshoot the issues and capture all relevant information from that so that if that can be communicated to any of your uh, uh, application team or any of your it team they will have all the loaded information whatever it's actually going on the device so similar way if you just open any application it just popped up an error message so with the help of this tool you just click on the screenshot and the screenshot get automatically captured and attach it to the same ticket now i just it's not just ended here just screenshot i can literally have an option to capture a video of the device to see what exactly going on so i just simply click on the video and i can just reproduce the issue what's going on i just open the application or whatever error message the user is getting it on the device and i just captured it and stop the recording the moment i stop the recording it it it, it automatically process the video and attach it to the same ticket if you want to take a look you can just click on the preview button the screenshot is added if i want to take a look on the video recording what which i just captured you can just play it and i whatever i just opened it it is already there on the device now screenshot is there your 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 uh, video is there now specific to android device the very important piece of information is the logs how 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 to capture the logs to check the exact root cause why the application went down or or maybe it's if it is a device specific issue what's happening so with the help of a single click from the option which we are added into the product it captures the all relevant logs from the device including the adb logs and other relevant logs it's just captured and attach it to the same ticket so whenever your application guy or your developer or whosoever will be taking a look on that particular logs they will have a clear visibility what exactly the issue is now i captured the logs i i i now i have an option to capture the entire 360 degree snapshot of a device like what's going on so <clears throat> i i just click on the button and it will give it it gives me a 360 degree information about the de device uh, you know battery percentage memory the storage uh, what are the applications currently installed application version number which is again a very important piece of information because a lot of customers they keeps on updating their in house application to the devices now maybe if, if it is like 10 15 device which is fine but if the environment is large like your, your they have ipad environment or they have like you know android devices environment which is more than 10000 or 5000 devices they have so 
pushing all those application it's a very business critical application which they cannot expose or they cannot you know publish to play store that's why they have it on their in house so they keeps on updating those application with the latest version so that uh, the users can have latest piece of information and the latest application features they can use it so i can just take the snapshot and 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 just click on save it automatically saved it on the same ticket now whatever information i have captured if i troubleshoot it properly if i able to resolve it i can i can resolve it right away or if needs further in, uh, intervention by your administrator or your application team you can literally go here you know and just create a ticket like who is the user you just search for the name because your emails or your ad gets integrated with the same solution the name will be automatically picked up now which team you want to you want to you want to assign it so the groups will be automatically created it is already there on your ad side you've done it now you mention it on on the on the ticket like you know uh, sap app is uh, down or whatever uh, you, whatever application you will be using it is just you just put into a blocker category because multiple users are impacted and you just click on click click on uh, open and a ticket get automatically created now this is the main dashboard of the incident management page within that same tool you will get it now this will give you a entire visibility like what are all types of issues have been reported in the last similar like an itsm tool you might have heard about service now remedy all these type of tools though they are like pro tools uh, where you know they they which is purely designed for you know uh, uh, itsm uh, itsm uh, logic or ITIL framework based, uh, they, they design the tool. Now, this tool is specifically for the mobile workspace where your environment is very complex mobility environment and your, your issues need to be logged and triggered and, and everything needs to be captured for future audits or future purpose. So similar kind of dashboard your administrator will have access to. Now, your, 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 the ticket which we, we, we just opened up, now you see all the information can be captured and whatever I have done it, whatever I have captured during my, uh, you know, uh, during my uh, uh, troubleshooting process, so your developer can easily figure it out. That's the issue, and they can immediately troubleshoot and fix the uh, resolution to your uh, end user. Now, this is one side of the, you know, uh, uh, USB. Now, the other side, which is the intelligence part or the BI part of the solution, which we call it as the, you know, uh, operational intelligence. Now, operation, operational intelligence will give you a, uh, a you know elaborated framework for your administrator to manage and you know analyze the parameters like battery status. Now, if 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 any of your customers you know using Zebra devices or Honeywell devices or Samsung devices, uh, they might experiencing battery issues. Uh, every every maybe six months seven months they might experiencing some issues on the battery now they are not able to figure out what's exactly going on why the battery is getting so drained i mean is it like a device specific issue or some application is causing this because the battery is falling so fast so this particular tool will definitely give you an entire visibility of how the battery status is like which 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 particular battery you know which application is draining the battery now, if I want to say application usage, now if you want to monitor or if you want to like you know analyze like if I if I designed an application which costed me so much money, and 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 how the users are using it, how many times they're opening that application, like uh, which application they are using on their productive times, are they really using the app or are they just you know uh, letting us know this app is not good or maybe this application is not working during the production time. So all these granular information with the help of different charts we have added and different parameters we have added so that with devices and with application, like number of visits, how many times the application was in the foreground, uh, how many times it has opened, what type of downloads it have been done on that devices. So you will get an entire visibility for that particular device. Now, similar way, the data usage, maybe some companies or some customers have given tablets or mobile devices to the users and they give SIM card. Now, SIM card have maybe, you know, limited data cap. Now, initially, maybe they, they given like, you know, open, uh, you know, they can use whatever they want to use it. 
but later on when they found unnecessary data has been exposed i mean they they're using unnecessary data on the devices now this will absolutely give you entire visibility like what are all application or which application is actually consuming a lot of data so irrespective of the device like user wise you can you can fully analyze the entire piece same way location now a lot of our transports and logistics customers they have been all any field force customers or any sales force customers on the field they are they are capturing some information or whatever application they're using is on those devices they few customer want to keep a track of their locations like what time uh, the user was on that particular location can we get a data can we get a data of course you can get a data those data can be accommodated and capture it and you can you can have it uh, on this analytic dashboard like uh, wh which which location uh, which location the user was last time into and what time the user was into so similar way you can capture it and the last but not the least a signal strength sometimes the users are uh, complaining about the you know the data connectivity you know that in that particular area my my signal strength is not good that's why my application was not working or maybe you know the there was no tower on that particular area that's why the call is dropping off or, or maybe uh, the data is not uh, communicating so this 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 tool will definitely uh, you know give you uh, uh, analytics overview of that particular uh, you know uh, device or that area okay uh, does it really, you know, on that particular location, the signal strength was not good. So after analysis, everything from that particular device or on the group of device, the, the dashboard will pull up all the information with all the device users, which you can see on my screen and, and the location with the longitude and the latitude value of that particular location. So similar way, you can have a, you can have a, a detailed visibility of your devices whatever you have uh, deployed uh, on different you know locations or different environment you have given just for your everyone's uh, information this technology which we this tool whatever we have designed it for now this is specifically targeting for android operating system as of now but we are in the process of adding other oss uh, like you know, the initial phase the next phase will be on the ios side and followed by windows so currently we are only uh, catering uh, you know the, uh, the android operating system uh, for this uh, soti x side so <clears throat> these are the two major tool i would say in 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 a very uh, you know uh, frequent uh, manner uh, the customers definitely looking for a solution for their mobile workspace and uh, <clears throat> they have their specific mobile environment they have different type of uh, they invested a lot of money on devices they are designing the investment a lot of money on designing the application now it's time to securing the data managing that application deploying the application silently to the devices without any user intervention you want to restrict a lot of policies to the devices like my end user shouldn't allow to factory reset the device or my end user not allowed to you know uh, install any unnecessary application from the device so all these use cases are gradually and slowly increasing in the enterprise space right now because everything is now getting mobilized when it comes to application and the device management category so <clears throat> that's the high level uh, you know uh, overview of these two solutions uh, soti snap uh, just to uh, show you how the console will look like so basically this is your rapid application development tool which we have uh, specific to android and ios and this caters uh, a, a specific value addition and the specific use cases where your uh, any set of data collection or data capture application you want to design it so if you go to any developer or if you if you contact any any isv they will definitely charge you a lot of money to design a very flat application a basic set of application just to have capture some forms just not 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 like as google forms but with with some graphics ui and, and something on the on the on the you know it looks good glossify on the device and and and, and the, your users can use that but this tool this tool definitely gives your administrator to you know design an application it's 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 just seamless i mean you 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 just select it and uh select the form type or it's a blank page on the canvas and you 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 just 
drag and drop different widgets on this particular platform to design the application. If I need a radio button to be there on some application, I can add it. I want the location to be captured when my when my field force is going to visit any customer's premises. Uh, if we capture certain information, the location should be automatically get captured. Maybe I also want the 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 picture to be clicked from that application. You just open the uh, open the widget, picture get clicked. It automatically captured on the on the on the on the same phone. I want the signature to be captured at the time of receiving or whatever uh, uh, use case you have in the scenario. Uh, in your use case, you can do this. So I am just drag and drop the widgets to a canvas. If you if you you know uh, go it in a live production or a, a live software development uh, you know scenario, just to design this particular template which you have seen right now. It takes like 1000 2000 lines, you have to write it at the back end, be it a Java or C++, whatever programming language you will be using it, it takes time. But this will definitely give you that ease to, you know, uh, just, uh, just drag and drop application, put the logics, put the logics and your, your, your application is all set. And not only that, whatever application, whatever data you are capturing from that application, which you have designed it, you have a hell lot of uh, you know uh, different environments where you can export the data using different uh, you know apis rest api services to your backend repository be it a google drive any snaplink sharepoint site onedrive any ftp or sftp server you are you have it you can just any webhook services you want to integrate with the same application you can use it same with if you want to fetch any information from one of your repository to the application same way you can do that by data importing so we have the data import uh, all these sources are available the major source any rest api services if you want to if you uh, if you want to get it integrated with the application you can do that so that definitely solve your development cost for any specific data collection or data capture application, you have to design it within few minutes, within few hours, you can design it. You don't require any separate, you know, programming uh, background required, or you want to hire a separate developer to design that application, uh, to design just a basic data collection application. This tool uh, will definitely helps you to, you know, uh, cater that requirement. And the last, uh, the last solution, but not the least, which is the SOTIC Connect. As I mentioned, the IoT platform, uh, which we have it uh, in a solution. Uh, yeah. So this is the this is the console how it looks like. So <clears throat> any set of uh, IoT uh, devices for now, we only catering the uh, thermal based printers, specific like you know Printronics, Brothers, Sato, all these brands. So any automated action like the devices now let's suppose uh, environment in manufacturing environment now as soon the shifts get starts at eight in the morning the printer should be ready it should connect it it should uh, it should check all the basic sanity checks on the device like the printer network the print level and your different parameters so your administrator will get an automated report right before the shift gets start yes those departments at that locations printers are all standby or maybe you want a report how many print heads are not working properly using the same tool you will get automated command automated scripts you have you can execute it maybe you have devices which those firmwares are outdated and you want to update those firmwares automated in a regular basis using soti connect as a solution which we have designed it to automate those functionality for these set of devices for now Maybe down the line, we will be adding some more like, you know, uh, security cameras or temperature units, sensor units. We have done a couple of projects in US where uh, uh, some POCs are already going in on their temperature units are getting, uh, you know, uh, monitored and uh, getting managed using this piece of uh, solution. So uh, just to summarize everyone, uh, this is how SOTI one, which we are, uh, you know, offering to our enterprise customers across any complex verticals, uh, be it device management, application management, uh, email management, or maybe content management. This definitely gives you an ease for your customers. So I'm open the uh, forum for any questions, anything, please. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Okay.
Any questions? Okay. Yeah, so, I have a question. Yes, please. Yeah. So, how does their partner program work for SOTI? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. So we we it's a great question, sir. Uh, thanks to you, uh, Atul, sir. Uh, so uh, SOTI as an organization, we don't deal uh, directly because we are associated with different partners, and Satcom is one of our uh, national distributor for our product, and uh, they are associated with their own set of partners, and uh, the similar way we work. <clears throat> Pankaj, are you there on the call? Okay, so you work through SATCOM. That's what yes, you're... yes, exactly, exactly. So SATCOM has their presence in different locations. So SATCOM is one of our primary and premium, uh, you know, uh, national distributor for the product. Okay. Yeah. Atul sir, I'll separately connect with you for this. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Any more questions, please? Okay, so Nireshpa, I think we've had wonderful sessions, wonderful speakers, set of uh, questions. Uh, and I think the testimonial also was the highlight of the day. So it's over to you Nireshpa to summarize and call yeah, it a day. But it's before that, Kostub, uh, yes. take one minute, uh... One one minute silence was there uh, for one of our member. Yes. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. So I think for Mangesh Bhai, uh, will uh, Shitij, you want to say anything about him first, and then Shitij, are you there? I am here. Yeah. Yeah. One second. One second. Yeah, are you guys able to hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. So there is nothing much I can say about uh, him. I have lost, uh, I think, uh, my best friend over the last 20 years. Uh, he was uh, not only my right hand, he was an extension to me. Incidentally, what uh, on his name, on his uh, uh, address contact card I have written second me and I think uh, that says uh, all about uh, him uh, on a personal level uh, it's like uh, it's like losing family and uh, uh, very frankly it's been about 20 days uh, almost three weeks tomorrow will be three weeks I haven't uh, gotten over him and I don't think I ever will uh, life has turned uh, upside down. Uh, it may seem funny to you guys, but uh, when you are so close to a person working with him, what you regret is the kind of uh, fights that you have had, the kind of, uh, you know, sometimes we always fight, you know, I mean, in office. My suggestion to you guys would be whoever your, uh, whoever your colleagues may be, Treat them with respect, treat them with love. Uh, a lot I can say, but uh, probably this is not the right uh, forum to say it. Uh, also, I don't want to look weak in front of you guys. Uh, one thing as a businessman, let me tell you, and this is a lesson that all of you and all of us must take. And that is, uh, do you have a second in command? And uh, if you have a second in command, do you have a third in command? This may look funny, but uh, yes, you know, I mean, as a small business, uh, we need to have a chain of people who are in command. We also need to have uh, written processes, policies, passwords, every single thing. Because uh, when your second in command goes, you have to pick up uh, threads from zero. I am infinitely, I'm infinitely grateful to 
some of the members of assert uh, though i have a long association with kamal baryani with kartik ka ji uh, they immediately pitched in they said you know i mean uh, while i was returning from uh, uh, mangesh's home uh, seeing his uh, parthiv sharir as we call it uh, kamal gave me a call and he said uh, i understand what you are going through don't worry about black box i am here to take care of it we'll think about uh, how to set up the next uh, uh, control and command center command and control center but i am there and i will don't arthik came in with the same thing a lot of others did pankaj bhai did that uh, mahesh bhaktani mahesh bhai are you there he sent me a mail uh, he sent me a message saying uh, you know i mean you want anything i am always available uh, all said and done my request to you people is uh, make sure you have good friends make sure you are part of an association like assert where you make good friends and people who are willing to stand by you in thick and thin uh, and uh, more than anything uh, just make sure that uh, you treat your colleagues with love बिकॉज जब जाते हैं ना तब याद वही आती है कि यार मुझे ऐसा नहीं करना चाहिए था यू नो आई आई मीन फॉर्चुनेटली लास्ट टू इयर्स वी हैड वेरी गुड रिलेशनशिप इन द सेंस दैट विदाउट मी स्पीकिंग ही वुड अंडरस्टैंड विदाउट हिम स्पीकिंग आई वुड अंडरस्टैंड एंड ही हैड फुल राइट टू स्कोल्ड मी बट ऑल दीज थिंग्स यू रियली फील लाइक यू नो गिविंग अप एवरी थिंग एंड गोइंग अवे trust me it's not easy it's not easy i'm very thankful to assert for uh, making sure that you know i mean making me feel loved making uh, i mean somewhere i think you know wo pyar mere liye nahi hai it is the legacy and the goodwill that mangesh has left me the company and the world with and i'm really thankful that's it mangesh god bless you wherever you are i'm sure you are in a better place and uh, thank you for all that you did not only for me but for so many of our members sorry i have overshot my time but i think mangesh ke bare mein jitna bolunga utna kam hai yeah. sorry guys thank you yeah thank you shitesh it was yeah mm-hmm. every it it, it is uh, any test test everyone i'm sure everyone feels the same yeah So, so no one you. can yes no one can fulfill the gap actually so which we we pray for him and we will take a minute silence for in his yes please Yeah, God bless him. Okay. So thank you, everyone. It is. Uh, we look forward to meeting up again, hopefully in in a physical format, not digital. but uh, let's 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 meet up in person and i think things are cooling down so look forward to the next tech day and uh, not last but not the least uh, counting those days for the 100th one uh, take care uh, we'll be socially responsible when you're getting together playing doing anything and be safe so uh, i would just like to add over here uh, so uh... So firstly uh, shitej uh, kindly accept our condolences uh, we, all, we all are a part of extended family that's why we call it as a assert family which is very important people automatically come to your help as and when even without asking so that is one area which i have rarely seen and that's <laughs> nice because your uh, that that's the bonding family bonding that we all have so that has been wonderful and uh, i thank all our sponsors for joining in today 
to continue with our topic, what we've given for synergy and to stick to uh, our deliverables. You know, uh, that uh, we would uh, be taking care of whatever the commitments are and we'll far exceed our expectations or uh, even the sponsor's expectations, seeing to it that we are hand-holding each other you know, in uh, growing together. So I thank all of you guys for joining in today and uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. We will be having a grand event on the 100th uh, Tech Day of ours. So probably let's let's look forward to meeting each one of you and thank you so much. Take care and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We conclude now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks everybody. Have a nice thank day. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Stop.